Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Dual Screens Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Stephen Fontana, and with me, as always, he is my brethren from another metheran. He's Andy Asimakis. How are you, Andy? Doing good, looking good, feeling good. It's a good day. Good man. vibes all around. Great it, day. It's a nice ass day today. Isn't it amazing what a what a three day weekend can do to the human? The, oh my god! The human it condition. feels like a Sunday. Right. It's great. But you had two Saturdays. Like that's Correct. the cool thing. Is like you have two days where you're like, no worries whatsoever. I have a whole day to recover. And actually, I am off tomorrow because I have a doctor's appointment. Look so I'm you. actually doing a four day kind of. Even though I still got to get up you. early, but like. I don't have any concept. real responsibility, so it's really, really wonderful. Um, joining us this week is Remy DeVoe. They are the developer of Shotgun King, The Final Checkmate, a unique strategy roguelike chess game. That's right. You heard me. A roguelike chess game with a shotgun. Remy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. It's like the perfect game exists. Is, what <laughs> I, is the only proper follow-up for that pitch well, i should say that i didn't make the game alone but sure sure yeah. sure but you know you, you did you did make it I it's mean, like well you and one other person maybe or two yeah 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 i'm, right. I'm part of the team that made right. shotgun king yeah <laughs> well why don't, why don't we start why don't we start there do you want you to tell us what your role is in, in sure. creating the shotgun um, king yeah so i mean on shotgun king specifically i'm uh I'm one of the developers. I guess I'm not the lead developer. The lead developer is the other uh, development from the team, uh, Benjamin Soule. Uh, I did help with a lot of bug fixing and a lot of feedback. Uh, and then I took care of the marketing of, well, I take care of the marketing of all the games that we make and I also do the, the engine work, uh, which is like, mm -hmm. basically I do the most technical stuff mm -hmm. and the least technical stuff. And Benjamin like takes care of the middle ground. Okay. Basically. Yeah. I love that. Just two, two things that are the exact opposite. I do yeah. the most of this and the least of this. <laughs> exactly. Then the nose bleeds happen <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love it personally, but I love doing like lots of different things. So it's perfect for me. Yeah. Now, were you, are you shocked to learn that you're not the only roguelike chess game that exists on planet Earth? I mean, I, I wasn't shocked, but... I was surprised at how much interest there was for it, I guess. Did you learn about that before or after you guys had? No, I've, we like, I mean, we didn't set out to make a chess game mm -hmm. like because uh, the game um, got created for Ludum Dare, which is Game Jam, where you make a game in 72 hours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a theme and the theme just inspired mm -hmm. us a chess game. And we were like, OK, we're making a chess game. Sure. Uh, but we had no idea that that was something that people wanted. Like we were just making it because we felt like that was going to be fun. No, and uh, turns I'm... out, yeah, people agree. <laughs> I think that it doesn't really exist. That it's sort of a brand new thing. That that's why they want. Yeah, I don't. It. I don't think people know they want it until they have it. I never asked for this. Like but... it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh yeah oh chess yeah i guess you know i understand chess i i played it a little bit like e even people that are hardcore into chess like we've noticed that they understand that the ai is using actual chess strategy in in the game as well like that that's something that's really cool so you actually have this thing where you're not just pretending to be a chess game it actually kind of really very much is chess it is chess yeah but, i mean when, yeah. when we started making the game it was a chess game like the, yeah. the original idea for the game is it's literally a chess game except you only have one piece and you know you give it a shotgun because <laughs> gotta have its chances because reasons yeah right. <laughs> exactly exactly where did yeah that... it's, it's really started off as a chess game yeah sorry where did that come from the idea of okay the baseline is chess obviously but yeah. then let's give the weakest piece on the board this weapon to decimate all of the other pieces. Like, I mean, where, describe like the thought process. It, it's a game jam, so things are like going off in your head. Yeah, you know, on all cylinders. So how does how did that design choice come about? I'm curious. Well, the theme of the of the jam was uh, delay the inevitable. So we took it to mean like mm. delay your demise, basically. Oh. And um, and that inspired Benjamin chess. 
Uh, maybe because he's not very good at it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> but he was like, well, what if one side only had one piece? And to make sure that it was unwinnable, let's make it the king because it is uh, it is indeed the weakest piece in chess. Um, and yeah, it, you know, he had to give it something so that it could survive somehow. So he said, hold on, on a shotgun. It's a nice, it's, it's a good, fun, and uh, interesting weapon. <laughs> and it rolls off the tongue. Shotgun it does. King, the final it checkmate. Does. It feels like it, it should be a, a, an 80s schlock movie. Like, what is that hobo with the shotgun? You ever see that, Steve? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or like, there's a nun one, too, I think. Like, I, like I, I hear, or... I hear, it's like hot fuzz a little bit. Like, I hear, um, <laughs> like that really muffled, like advertisement from like a uh, of a vhs tape like it's in the beginning of e the evil dead vhs like coming soon like that one guy that one voice for all the trailers <laughs> yeah, back in the yeah, 80s yeah yeah but it's like, like super, all the, like super all the horror, horror movies you know what this reminds me of it, it actually reminds me of the ending spoiler alert speaking of the 80s the ending of scarface that's what this whole setup reminds me of you are the king you are Scarface. The entire world is collapsing around you. The entire local military is outside your door. And he just has a gun and a whole lot of coke. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. And it's just one guy just getting shot. That's what this whole scenario reminds me of. It's like a one man against the world kind of thing. That's fair. Remy, yeah. Remy did coke co-author this game? <laughs> so... <laughs> uh... I think I'm not legally. Allowed yeah, you don't have to. to you don't have this. to admit to anything here <laughs> on the show. I do want to get into the the roguelike aspects. Aside yeah. from you know, it's a one and done. When you die, you die. That's it. You go back to the first floor out of out of ten. You have some of the most vicious choices I've seen in a roguelike game. I feel like the idea of a roguelike and progression is you have abilities that you can choose from okay yeah. is this worth the risk reward i can get a buff in this area but i can i also get this debuff and i weigh that out but usually in a roguelike it's a quick decision at least for me i am spending hours saying do i want a bigger spread but there's like i get there's like six more pawns on the board I, this is what i go through <laughs> every session can you describe how you designed and thought of these ridiculous uh, buffs and debuffs for Shotgun King? I mean, it's just a system that works well. I mean, it's something that we do kind of often because, uh, you know, we make a lot of games. I don't know. I think I didn't say that. But so our mm -hmm. thing as a studio is that we make a new game every month. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of small games. And even before uh, before we formed that studio, uh, Benjamin and I, we both made a lot of uh, jam games or very small games. And uh, resorting to roguelike mechanics, especially of upgrades like this, uh, it's it's something we do pretty often because it's very efficient and it's kind of easy to make it fun uh, if you know how to do it. So we do have some experience with that. And for a game jam, uh, if you want to make a good game, it's good to use the skills that you do have. Um, and yeah, m putting uh, negatives like uh, bonuses and I don't know how to say that in, in English. Uh, like negative bonuses, I don't know, but yeah, like the good bad punishments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and like putting them together and making you choose, like it's. I think what works really well in Shotgun King is the double choice, right? Because you you have two choices that are just linked together, and you just can't do anything about it. <laughs> and Benjamin is actually really good at this like at, at torturing the player basically like yeah Very. you can have this sure but look yeah it's it's You'll as equally as well. detrimental as it is rewarding like that's the thing yeah it's, yeah it's equal you don't feel like you're getting too powerful or things are getting too uh lopsided in in the the egg the game's favor you know whatever like the player doesn't feel op and the world doesn't feel op when anything um the one thing that I that I have difficulty with is making those decisions, not knowing where 
this is going to lead to on the next level or the level after that like that in a lot of roguelites or roguelikes you can sort of see how you want to plan your character out for that run um and in this one it's more like well if i do this who knows what i'm gonna get in the next one to choose from i don't know if i want to have the you know like you said the bigger spread or the or the um the bullet that penetrates through everybody because who knows what's going to happen at the end so you really are kind of just winging it as you're going but you never feel like you're handicapped in any way while you're doing it it's always going to be a fun and interesting psychotic chaos run no matter what <laughs> i mean i think most of like most roguelikes that i play are like this like you do have mm -hmm. to improvise mm -hmm. on the go and but it's it's also about taking a chance you know like you're gonna if you're gonna go for sniper builds uh well you're gonna try to get those upgrades when they do show up of course they're not always gonna show up but you have to trust right. that <laughs> that you'll be lucky enough to have the ones uh that, that you want or that at least go the way that that you want to go right yeah but i guess um some upgrades are like more important than others like some upgrades make a bigger difference if you like uh, especially like in your play style and if you get them early they will definitely have a bigger impact on the run than if you get some um, i guess meeker update upgrades uh, at the beginning uh, which still gives you like more choice hmm. uh, after that yeah but it's just... interesting because it forces you to like uh explore basically the possibilities yeah it it does it just, it just the idea of your enemy getting as strong as you as you're progressing is very interesting to me because usually in roguelikes if you you can suck total ass at a roguelike but if you play long enough and you progress and you stack something like be it like leveling up a weapon on the back end or unlocking other abilities even if it's you just your health too like if right. you just become a tank and you when you do a fresh mistakes. run you have like yeah. all of your failures stacked behind you that you've gained some experience like hades you can purchase upgrades and level up right. your health and your everything as you go along this is just when you're done you're done and when you start you're getting strong but so is your opponent and that's the beauty of it where it doesn't let you rely on your failures to get better it's you have to learn chess to be good at this game <laughs> yeah i mean one of the issues that i always have with with roguelites is like if you get the shit end of the stick like that's it you're done like it doesn't matter like at that point like you just got a really crappy uh deal and you're just gonna have to deal with it and you're gonna fail and whatever um and then there's people who know the exact permutations that they want to get and if they don't get it they'll just restart and then they get like the perfect build and i'm gonna go through the thing like there's none of that here this is like okay this is the hand i'm dealt let me see how far i could get cool that was fun because it's and that's i think the most important thing important thing is it's fun like it's 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 not head bangingly frustrating it's not um unfair it's it's a fun game to even fail at like it's it to be in a corner and you're like what is happening it's like the zombie apocalypse but whatever it's fun i don't know it's just there's something about it just being like okay one more run because it's not the game you're not fighting the game to play it it's just kind of naturally happening and you're just having a good time doing it and i think that comes from uh maybe maybe either of you could speak on this but um i think it comes from being a simple concept of chess like chess lasted as long as it has and is as popular as it is because it has rules that are that make sense and the game is fun like no matter where what level you are if you're a beginner it doesn't matter it's an addictive game to play it's lasted i don't know how many thousands of years is it thousands of years? I don't even know. Is it hundreds sure. of years? I don't know. I think so. I feel like it might be thousands. I don't know. Maybe I'm an idiot. Um, Maybe. I'm probably an idiot. <laughs> a thousand years? Can we say a thousand? A thousand that sound plus right? years. I think that's fair. That'll save you. A thousand plus. Okay. <laughs> At least a thousand plus. A thousand <laughs> plus or minus. That that makes sense. But yeah, I don't know. Andy, maybe you have some thoughts on that. I'd rather have Remy chime in at this point with his thoughts about chess. Sure. And just as chess. About chess. Well, that, as an chess is a really interesting time. game. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that chess. I mean, uh, I guess, I mean, like, yeah, a lot of people know the, ch the rules of chess or like the basic rules, which really played in our favor. What's really interesting is that 
the game does help like shotgun king does hold your hands with the chess aspects of the game because if you try to make a, a stupid move or suicidal move the game will not let you basically <laughs> <laughs> but that's really important because even though everyone knows like most people know the rules of chess that doesn't mean you're good at it i think let's be honest most people are not good at chess i'm terrible at chess <laughs> this game makes me think i'm good at chess which is a problem or i should buy a shotgun one of the two Wait, i i'm pretty it's good at chess the... <laughs> if this was chess like if this was what right. chess was i think i yeah. got a handle on it yeah but that's really that, that's actually really important for the game that the game will not let you the most stupid uh, moves, I guess. Because if it did let you do that, well, the runs would be a lot shorter and a lot more frustrating, I think. Yeah. And that, that's something that we we had a lot of uh, back and forth on, on the jam version, actually, on the very first version of the game. Uh, because, well, we did have one problem where we, like, we were like, well, Okay, we're protecting the player, but to what point? Because we don't want the system to play the game for the player either, right? We can't go too far. And uh, and yeah, we, we try to find a good middle ground. We'll still have a problem where like, if you shoot uh, a piece and then you get killed by the piece that was behind that one, there's a lot of people complaining about that. But we're like, yeah, but we can't just predict the whole game. That would, that would, that would just not be fun. Right. But it's really important for the game to actually hold your hand just because, yeah, we, we know you're not good at chess. That's fine. We're not very good at chess either, to be completely honest with you. So <laughs> we understand. How did you know that this was going to be your first game you wanted to put out on Steam? Because you, you guys do games every month. And we'll get into that a little yeah. bit later because that's a whole other thing I want to talk about at some point. Right. Because um, that sounds stressful. It sounds like hell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why someone would do that to themselves deliberately i mean um the easy the best thing about that is we have a guest for every month andy like we have we only have to yeah. search for three so people if, now if we <laughs> ever earn a bind like yeah we Remy, know what you're working on this one come Remy's on show. got something yeah yeah i'll go for it <laughs> but how did you know that this was like the one that you felt would work on steam and maybe find an audience or was it just this what was that like talk us through that process of putting this game as it's, your first Steam release? It's very simple. The game got insanely popular <laughs> before it even was out. Like, even <laughs> before we released the Jam version, the first GIF of the game that we put on Twitter, it got mm -hmm. like 20k likes. I've Holy never shit. seen that on a gameplay GIF. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just nice. insane. And then, uh, and then, yeah, the game was out uh, for the Ludum Diary. Oh, yeah, the Ludum Diary version, and all the feedback were like super positive, and everyone was loving it. And we were like, okay, well, this is clearly becoming a big deal. So let's make the most out of it, I guess. And we've been yeah. wanting to put a game on Steam for super long now. It's just that we never managed to get to take the time to do it. Hmm. But on, for this one, we were like, okay, we just can't pass on that much attention that the game is already getting without us doing anything at all, really. So yeah, we we're like, okay, we're just this time we're putting on, putting it on Steam and mm -hmm. we're doing it as fast as we can because we don't want the attention to die out either, right? Right. And okay. yeah, that's what we did. We did do the each release earlier because it's like just faster to release things on itch and just easier uh and it actually was really good because it allowed us to catch a lot of bugs and to keep on working on the game and make it like just better basically for the in time for the steam release right yeah and then of course seeing like all these major outlets like polygon kataku like covering your game like have have we made it are we are we <laughs> are we in have we broken Are through? we real game developers? <laughs> <laughs> Have we made it? <laughs> I guess so. I guess we did make it. I mean, you know, we're, we're to be honest, we're still more interested in making more games, like more mm -hmm. different games. But it's really cool to have this one work so well. Yeah, it's honestly, yeah, it's awesome. And what's great about it is that the money it's making will let us make whatever we want behind it, which is really cool too. See that that's that's I think the the big thing to take away from this is like, you know, you you were gonna do this regardless. You were gonna make a game a month regardless. You were yeah. gonna keep going forward. But now you've got this 
bona fide hit. And now this is going to allow you to kind of expand your scope a little bit on future projects. But I wanted I wanted to ask, did the immediate like success of that first gift, did that change your development philosophy for Shotgun King? Or did you keep, keep with that, you know, get it out in the world? Like, you know what I mean? Like, did it say, okay, this is getting a lot of traffic or whatever. Should we work on this for a little while longer than we normally planned on? It did in the end, not at that point, uh, but later on when we saw that the game first started to make uh, big sales on itch, like uh -huh. it's even just on itch is the game that sold the most uh, of the ones that we put out there. And, um, and from there, we knew that already if we put it on Steam, we we're probably going to have to make to make updates if we really want to make the most out of it and you know keep on working a little bit on it and do all the bug fixing that needs to be done and all that basically yeah just keep keep on taking care of it mm -hmm. so at that point yeah we did we did decide that we would treat it uh, differently from our other games yeah what uh what goes wrong in a game like this in development what goes wrong? Fixes. Like tell me, give me some greatest hits of oh well some, it's just some things that cracked you up in the <laughs> development cycle. <laughs> okay, I can tell you about that, but like for all roguelike games, it's always the same problem. You have like the the make the thing that makes roguelikes fun is that you have multiple gameplay elements that clash together in interesting ways. It's like uh, basically gameplay emergence uh, is uh, one term that we use in game uh, in game design, and that's very risky from a programming mm -hmm. uh, point of view because you're like the game works because things are clashing together in unexpected ways. When you're a programmer, you want to expect the most like everything basically right. because in when things happened and you didn't expect it to happen this way you have like a 50 percent chance that it's gonna go absolutely wrong or maybe it's just gonna crash the game because you just didn't think that would happen like who would do that right, right. but players do that players do they, they just take the game and they do whatever they can to break the game because they're just evil <laughs> um <laughs> gamers are evil got it <laughs> but i guess we evil. there was something that was funny at the very beginning of development um before the game got out the first version there was one upgrade that was called the king's shoulders and mm -hmm. the king's shoulders the description of the card was lifts bones on your way yeah i think that's it actually just mm -hmm. lifts bones on your way mm -hmm. and, and so benjamin had done that and i was like what does that mean and he's like, but well, I'll try it out. Like, okay, I'll try it out. I take the card. I don't see any immediate effects. So I try to get closer to bones because clearly it has something to do with that. And just nothing happens. I'm like, what the hell? This is just nothing. What, what does the card do? And he was like, wait, you, you got close to the bone and nothing showed up? And I was like, no. Was like, okay, no, you're supposed to see like a little pair of pincers. I'm like, no, I didn't see any prints. Like, are you kidding me? Like, are you fooling with oh, me right no. now? And he was like, no, no. I was like, okay. And like two hours later, he was like, oh, uh, so the card's effect was on the wrong card. So that card actually didn't do anything. So I was oh, like, no. okay, cool. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. And so he tried again. I think the next version, it still didn't work. So I, 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 it showed up again. I picked it. And still didn't work. And I was like, you're, this time you're kidding me, right? <laughs> it was like, no, no, it's fair. And in the end, it didn't put it in the game. He was like, yeah, it just, it doesn't work. I'm not happy with it. So I'd never actually got to test it at that point. And he was like, it's okay. I'm going to put it in for the, for the itch version. And in the end, he didn't do that either. So like the card just got. It's, it's a cursed card. What was yeah, it exactly. supposed that, to do? That's, that's exactly what how it felt because I still <laughs> was very much unsure at what it was supposed to do exactly, and uh, and so I started talking about it to players and Benjamin saw it. It was like, you know what? I'm gonna do the card. I'm gonna prove to you that I'm not crazy. 
<laughs> and the legend grew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and the card actually got in for for the Steam release. So now it, there is like the king's shoulders in the game, and it's not even the bones anymore. Now you can just throw any piece that is not the king at other right. pieces. It's actually mm -hmm. very funny. You literally pick up the piece and put it on the king's shoulder and he <laughs> thing it's he flings it at other pieces and deals free damage it's just great oh man how is this game only six dollars i feel uh, like I, I, I would pay so much more for this because it's given me so much so much fun so much replayability and it's shown me how bad I am at chess and the, the, the comedy attached to that <laughs> and the dumb moves I make on, the, on a constant basis is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it is, it is our business model. Like mm -hmm. all our games are that same price. So like we weren't going to change the price just for that right. game because like, yeah, we didn't feel good. Well. On the switch you know then you could charge 30 yeah. bucks because that's what everybody sure. else does those commies yeah those are jerks <laughs> <laughs> no this game needs a mobile version i feel oh it mobile just, would be yeah that just, would kill it just would work so beautifully well I, mobile I development it. is kind of hell to be honest <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is the reason they doesn't already exist mm. um but i don't know Maybe maybe it will make it happen at one point, but we can't. We, don't, we just don't really have hmm. plans. Just hire yeah. some people. You got the funds now. Yeah, you guys are rolling in it now. Use all those juicy sales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. We'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So it's I not do... completely out of the question. Yeah, yeah. of course. Is of it course. Steam Deck optimized? Can we play this on the Steam Deck? Oh, you can actually play it on Steam Deck. People yeah, have baby. That. And they've showed pictures. And to be honest, it's not optimized. But the thing is, the game is like it's really doesn't yeah. need much at all. Yeah. So yeah. I was gonna say, works. what are you optimizing in the game? Like <laughs> <Yeah. this? laughs> um, Steve, so I yeah. know my my Steam Deck is here. No way. Ooh. Well, I purchased it from Matt. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Damn. It's hanging out in the in the in the den oh, dang um in busy weekends i couldn't crack her open just yet but i will at some point color me jealous uh i know i just want to get that in there uh so this whole making one game a month thing yeah um why <laughs> is my first question that's a good question that's a good place why? to start off yeah that yeah. is a good question we're living i guess you know again in a world of we hear about crunch things being yeah. delayed things that need polish yeah. that need time you have obligated yourselves to make one game every single month without fail. We can't even do bonus shit every month. You're doing games. We're terrible. We're terrible. <laughs> so it. go into go into that. Because that is, I find that very interesting. I mean, I think well, and it's true. A lot of developers want to do that. Like a lot of the of developers really want to make a new game every month because it's mm. it's a lot of fun. Like when you're a game developer, you have a lot of ideas that you want to get done. And most of the time you just can't do it because you don't have the opportunity to do it. And if you do have the opportunity to do it, either you have to pick one and stick with it for a few months to a few years, mm. which is boring, boring as hell. <laughs> it's really terrible. I, I hate it personally. I like, I, I can't spend more than two months on the game and without mm. getting crazy. Um, so yeah, a lot of developers want to do that. And I wanted to do that. And Benjamin was up for it. And, um, there's another studio who has been doing that for, for a few years. They're called Sockpop. They're in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. They've actually been doing two games a month for a while. Holy uh, shit. And then oh. they switched to one game a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they released... That was just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, they are four and they're all game developers. Um, so we were like, well, when we started off, we were just two. Uh, Beta Dragal wasn't with us then, but even then, like he, he's a composer. He wasn't going to help us program the games, right? Um, By the way, side note, I'm a huge yeah. fan of that composer. Yeah, like, he's great. Cyber, Cyber Shadow, yeah. Nuclear Blaze, mm -hmm. yeah. Shotgun King. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> yeah that, that, that's quite the, that's quite the get that that's a get yeah yeah and all our other games too i mean but yeah his work is stellar it's really good we're, oh, we're super happy to have to have him one, that is with one us. talented fucker i'll tell you right now dude <laughs> yeah that is just that, <laughs> very much agree that son of a bitch <laughs> 
but yeah, yeah, making a game of mouse is something that like it's just something that you want to do when you're a game developer because you just want to get through all these ideas that you have. And that's exactly what we're doing. And it's great. It's a lot of work. That's true, but right. it's great. How, how does the process look for you guys when you are starting from conception to final release? How long does that process take? Well, a month. Next well, question. I, yeah, well. <laughs> you really walked into that one there, Andy. I, I did. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. It takes a month to develop. Well, how long from how when long? you start to finish? A like, month. How does that... Fantastic. I mean, some of the games are based off old prototypes, especially mm. Benjamin's games. Like uh, the very first game that we put out uh, is called Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> don't even say that <laughs> <laughs> well we, we we're making a new game every month we do have to cut corners sometimes sure sure okay. sure sure it's okay um our first game was based on a, a free game called mr beam which is on the pico 8 uh the pico 8 is it's a fake console it's well they call it fantasy console uh -huh. uh, it's like a, a retro game console from the 90s that just never existed uh huh. Hey. And you can make games for that, and there are like restrictions, but they're fake because it's fake console. But you you still have to respect them uh, if you want if you want to use. The okay. Game. It's, basically, it's a game engine, but it's a really weird game engine. Uh huh. Uh, where your screen is tiny, like the resolution is 128 pixels by 128 pixels. Uh huh. So it's a square, <laughs> tiny screen with yeah. really shitty resolution, and you only yeah. get 16 colors. Uh -huh. okay <laughs> to work with and there's also limitations on the codes so um but it's actually a really great thing uh i might sound like a masochist at this point but a little really bit great. no no <laughs> at first it's like we got a month I'll also hear all these other crazy restrictions we have to apply to ourselves and we're doing this I, game in a month we don't we don't make the the game a month uh games with that no, I was gonna uh, say, but that's... Benjamin and I, Benjamin and I, we both used that thing mm -hmm. uh, in the past a lot, actually, because it's it's literal, really, it's really fun uh, to use and to make games with. It actually first forces you to make small games, right? Because uh, you, you just can't make something big with it; it's just mm -hmm. literally impossible. Um, so you have to make small things, and that's great. That's good practice, actually. Um, and the low resolution and the limited palettes of colors actually brings a lot of personality to the games. And that's really cool as well. Um, I mean, for me, I've spent quite a few years making uh, games with that and it's been really formative. So I don't regret it at all. And now we actually use our custom game engine, which I've actually been making since 2018. So it's been like four years. Mm. And it's actually very much inspired by that, uh, by the wow. Q8s, except that, well, it, it is less restrictive uh, you do pick your own resolution and like uh, your own color palettes, but it still has that fake retro vibe, like for us developers, sure. I mean. And of course, that does like help make the game feel fake retro as well, or neo retro, I guess is the is the new term. Well, at least yours is real. It yeah, exists. but yeah, well, it's, it's yeah, it's still <laughs> kind of fake because you know, but. <laughs> We're the fact is that we're not in the nineties, but um, but but yeah, I mean, we just we just think it's fun and we like working this way, and we also are kind of purists, like with mm -hmm. the pixel art and things like that. Like, things need to look authentic and rice. Yeah, they do have their own set of rules too. I feel like whenever I scrounge like a fan game forum, like be it a Mega Man game or anything that's NES centric. It's yeah. always if you go outside this palette, you're just exiled from the tribe. <laughs> yeah. Get out! That color yeah. does not belong. That is not an NES color. Get his ass out of here. Hmm. Um, I would imagine when you spend so much time because it's a month, just a sprint to make a game, and then you rinse repeat. That you right. must love. That you must love the process, the creatively, the coding aspect. Did you always want to make games growing up? Oh, that's a really good question. Hmm. Uh, I had no idea that you could make games until very late, actually. I knew video games existed, hmm. but I had no idea that there were actual people making them. It's You're not really the first weird. guest to say that. 
<laughs> really? You that's, are, yeah. That's crazy. They came from this magical land called Japan. <laughs> <laughs> that like that's like the consensus is that japan has like this weird it's like another planet where the nintendo is they it and, grows, and godzilla lives and godzilla <laughs> and it's just sent over here and then we just play them and it's like yay thank you but yeah, yeah no, you're I not the that. first I mean, person I, to think that yeah but i i was playing like european game european games as well and i don't know why it never hit me but then in high school i actually learned about indie games and when you learn about indie games, usually, well, especially at that period, you also learn about the creators, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when it hit me. And I already wanted to work in computers. And I was like, well, I love video games. And I already want to work in computers. So maybe I could just make video games. Is that possible? Is that something did, I can Did do your mind explode when you realized like computers <laughs> but, yeah, it are really, what it makes really video did, games? Honestly. Like it, that's yeah. like, they could, they're together in some way. Yeah, the, yeah I, I get it's, it. it's just crazy. I, I got to ask, because you said it, yeah. you learned about indie games in high school. I did. How, how the fuck old are you? Like 20? <laughs> Making games be being successful? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm already red. <laughs> I take any more red than this. <laughs> I'm 24. I'm I, getting, I I'm, knew okay. you were a baby. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> a baby. I knew it. Okay. Well, okay. I'm that, actually... That's amazing, though, that you know, you're starting well, this young. You. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm the young blood of the team, I guess, because mm. uh, the other two members, Benjamin and Patadra Gold, they're in their forties. Okay. So yeah, that's us. That, that's it. That's <laughs> like, well. All right, speak for yourself, sir. Okay. No, you're like you're you're, you're like late thirties. You're there. I'm right in the mid. I'm in mid thirties, sir. Okay. You're there. You're there. I grew up with the NES, but I know what you know. what I mean, like I know how the old world works, and I know how the new world works. I'm not an old fogey. I don't need a tutorial from my grandkids just yet. <laughs> How to operate the printer or whatever. <laughs> We're okay. But yeah, I mean, I actually quit school almost as soon as I could. Because I, oh. I did go to a video game school. Mm -hmm. And I dropped out before the end of the first year. I, okay. I learned a lot. And I was a pretty good student. But I was getting bored, to be honest. Yeah. And I already had my side projects. And I was like, well, I'm just going to do my side projects full time. And I'll learn sure. things that I find actually interesting. And so I didn't earn any money for a while. But then I wasn't losing any money either, right? Because I was going, going to the expensive school. Um, and yeah, it, it worked out. Did but you, that's that's also have... why I'm this far while also being this young. Yeah. Did you have like another job to kind of keep you afloat or were you just kind of like like no how... i i mean uh my, my family uh supported me well I, right like, yeah well you're yeah. i lived at my mom's place right yeah, that, that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense support you <laughs> no no yeah. I, i'm talking about like after high school like between high between yeah, the yeah. end of high school and now like when you were trying to figure out your place in the world like I, I i was like that too like i lived with my parents until i was 23 i think so like you know, I, I get it. You know, you have the opportunity to take those risks and it looks like you, you took that risk and, and it sort of paid off for you because a lot of kids, they'll go to school and they'll get nothing. They'll have nothing. Sometimes they have a portfolio, but what does that get you? You still need to get a job. You still need to get hired. But I know in indie development, if you physically do the thing that you want to eventually do, that's way more valuable than yeah. just telling people you can do it and you have the training to do it. Um, so, yeah. you know, like you probably had how many games by the time you were 20, 21, which is when we would graduate college here in the, in, you know, in the States or whatever. So like, you know, how many games did you have under your belt by then? How many different projects did you have under your belt? You had something to show people outside of just a degree, a piece of paper, you know? So, yeah, I think I had like games. I guess I had like ten or something like that. And then they were mostly like small. Very Doesn't small matter, games. man. You finish something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But something that's interesting. I think at twenty one, I got my first contract. Or was I in at twenty? I don't know. It was around there. Uh, I made mobile games. That's why I say that mobile development is hell because yeah. I actually touched it. I know how it is. It's Horrible. awful yeah it's horrible um but something else is that i was actually writing uh like articles i guess like technical write-ups about uh programming techniques and stylistic techniques as well okay 
And, um, and that was also really formative. And something else is that it was really appreciated in the community of game, de game developers uh, where I was. And that actually opened, opens a lot of doors for me as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. This is going to sound a little cliche, but I kind of want to ask it anyway. Mm. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in, no, seriously, like in five years time, you know, you'd be five years cl time. closing in 30. Do you, do you think you'll be having 60 games released in that time? Or do you want to keep with this format, this release schedule, or do you want to maybe pursue something a little more of a grander scale that will take you? Two months to finish instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you want to slow things down a little right, bit. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, no, honestly, no. I I want to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe in five years, I get bored of one game a month. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I mean, okay. it's like, it's a really good uh, rhythm to keep you on your feet, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, apart from that, I don't know, fuck grander schemes, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, no, I like, I like doing small things. I uh -huh. think it's more interesting for me anyway. I like that. Mm -mm. I like that a lot. Speaking of small things, Andy, it's time Speaking to get into things we love to do, Stephen. Yes. Things we love to do <laughs> and the small things. It is now time to slip into a comfortable pair of sweatpants and get into the rapid fire section of the podcast. This is where we really get to know you. Okay. Um, this is where we're going to, we're going to peel back the, the, the layers of the onion as it were, and really get down to the nitty gritty. So we're going to start very, very, very simply. Um, okay. I like that whole face peeling off. It was just a second ago. Yeah, it's good. It's a little scary. Uh, yeah, it's a, it is a little, it's a little scary, but it's not too scary. So we're gonna <laughs> but we're gonna start off simple. Would you rather have the superpower of flight or invisibility? Flight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to explain. No, 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 no. No, no you know it's it's rapid okay. fire for it's a reason. Rapid fire. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Fire it rapidly. Would you rather have your beautiful long hair be strands of spaghetti or sweat maple syrup mm. for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Maple syrup. Mm. Ooh, very sticky, but very delicious. Good choice. Very delicious. Yeah, it's a very, <laughs> very good choice. Listen, as someone that's lost almost all of his hair, <laughs> I understand that decision. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can't see what this headset's hiding, but just... <laughs> a bear wasteland <laughs> i'm gonna give you more superpower questions i feel like all of my questions today are gonna to be superpowers yeah would I mean, you... You, give a, you give a king a shotgun in chest that's a superpower yeah. so it's, it it's on this it is that's fair it's, it's on thing would you rather be able to control water or fire i mean that's that's an interesting one because fire is cool as hell mm -hmm. but water sounds more practical like more useful mm. I'll go with water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you were developing a DLC to Shotgun King and you're playing as one of the king's pawns, what weapon would the pawn have? I mean, it's a bomb, so I'd, I would just give it a handgun, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not as bad as, you know, a little, a pea, little pea shooter. <laughs> yeah. I, got you. I like it. I like it. Would you rather be able to travel really fast, like run, like run like the Flash, go really fast, or slow down time so that you move normally, but the world goes super slow. So it's almost as if you're traveling. Yeah, really yeah. Fast. Slow down town. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm always running out of time. Always. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine sure. what kind of game you'd make in a month with being able to just stop time. <laughs> Uh, speaking of superpowers, let's say you had any power of your choice. I'm not going to say what it is. Would you use it for good or for evil? Ooh. Do I have to choose? Can I do like a little bit of both? A little both? bit of both? That's a, little a choice. Gray, a little gray area. That's a like choice, it. yeah. A little, okay, okay. Yeah, I feel like I'd fall in that category a little bit kind of maybe. Mm. <laughs> I'd lean in one direction more than the other, but still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As the wind blows. Yes, mm. yeah. It's all, it's circumstantial. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
would you would you rather be able to teleport to anywhere on the planet or any time on the planet? I'd say anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Mm. Mm-hmm. Anytime sounds scary, dangerous yeah. on on a physical on a philosophical level. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's say that little glass cup you're holding mm-hmm. had like pure grain alcohol in grain it. Grain alcohol, and you're just and you're just drinking it during this podcast, and you got fucked up drunk. Fucked up. Right. What, Weird. What word? What word best describes you when you're fucked up drunk? <laughs> like sloppy drunk like you've had way too much to drink regrettably drunk <laughs> <laughs> what word comes to mind how would your friend hmm. describe you humiliating okay <laughs> okay okay yeah that's it that's <laughs> let's give benjamin a call to see if you confirm. <laughs> i'm gonna stick with my superpowers here Andy. keep going man i love it keep would going. you rather be able to see very far or mm. hear very far. Mm. I think seeing is more useful. Mm, interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. I'm going to go with that same theme, Stephen. Oh, if, you could, if you could wish a shitty superpower on your worst enemy, mm-hmm. what power would that be? <laughs> mm. That's more difficult the, than the, the choice questions. Mm-hmm. Um, shitty superpower. Something really dumb. <laughs> like, you know, Marrow from X Men, how she grows bones? Mm. That's stupid. I mean, <laughs> like, she figures dumb. it out. She does, yeah, but still, it's, it's dumb. <laughs> You've got a point. You've got a point. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like the blob. No, he, the, the... he's got great powers. He's got indestructible oh, know, skin know, and he's unbreakable. Oh, wait, he's got reverse he's got... Jesus. You can turn wine into water. Oh shit. Nice. You would okay. never get a party invitation. <laughs> nice. I like that. Reverse Jesus. Uh-huh. And you make people sick. I like it. And I you like get it. resurrect. <laughs> you touch and people no and their arms fall you. off. <laughs> and everyone hates you. You sink right to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> you can't you can you swim no zero percent no buoyancy whatsoever <laughs> you are this you are the son of dog i love it i like it. <laughs> oh lord okay uh-huh, uh-huh all right we're gonna get let's away get, from superpowers here let's get a few more in here. let's get let's we're get gonna get more. we're gonna get philosophical in here philosophical <laughs> sure. in here <laughs> It is 1 a.m. here. I nice. have to oh, this say is, that. This, this is the, you this chose the time. This is perfect. <laughs> they were like, I'm up till four in the morning. Let's do this whenever you want to do it. Great. Cool. <laughs> is breakfast cereal mm. a soup? <laughs> is that the question? That is the question. I would say yes. Nice. I like that answer. I'm guess it's kind of a stew but i guess a stew is a soup as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have you so ever yes, yes. good <laughs> put that in the yes column thank you have have you ever dreamt of that creepy drawing behind you coming to life and strangling that's, you and that's your, that's, your that's terrifying <laughs> i didn't want to say anything but that that is I some guess, you know, adult it's swing less scary in real me. life okay. especially with the Kind of yeah. dark lighting. It's not. I, I I get it. I understand. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I have never had that nightmare. Okay. So did you that did you do, the question. did you paint that? Is that yours? Is that no your no? Art? I I bought it. <laughs> Believe it or no, I bought it. Okay. <laughs> it's a it's a yeah. poster from the um, a YouTube channel actually called oh, wow. First Gazette. Okay. Well, they explain things like mostly mm. scientific things. Mm. Okay. And yeah, it's it's a really good channel. It's really interesting. Here, here's a cool question for you. And then Andy, you could take yeah. us home with the final question. The final final? You yes, 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 yes. I see a drum set behind you. If we oh, right, yeah. if we ask you or somebody asks you, hey, play something on the drums, what is your go-to song to play on the drums? <laughs> okay. My answer is very sad. Okay. 
I wouldn't because I got the drums because I wanted to play drums and I don't actually have the time to play the drums. Oh. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, I'm going to modify the question then. Modified question. Right. You have a month. You got you have no game to make. Oh, your, your, I, I know. Your yeah. project is to learn a song on the drums. Mm -hmm. What right, song right. do you pick? What do you want I mean, to if, learn on the drums? If I want to go really hardcore, Ooh. I would try to play something like um, an iteration from The Arms, which is like my favorite band, even though like most people have never heard of it. Okay. It's really good. The Arms? <laughs> I've never heard the of it. The Arms. Armed. A-R-M-E-D. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Armed. Okay. I'm gonna what write that band down. Are they? Yeah, they're uh, it's hardcore punk. It's, okay, okay. It's like rock, but very violent. I yeah, I could get on board <laughs> I'm, with that. I'm, shit. There, I'm there. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. <laughs> it sounds like my kind of good time. <laughs> it's All very right. good. Yeah. Well, speaking of really good, Rami, this has been very, really good. Before Excellent. you ask, ask the last question, folks, I want to let I want to say thank you for checking oh, out it. the Dual Screens podcast, the internet's yes. number one indie developer interview podcast, hosted by people you've never heard of. Probably the show posts each and every Friday for your listening pleasure on your podcast service service of choice, including our home Podbean. You can find us everywhere. And if we're not on your podcast service of choice, like if you Google and you're like, where the hell are they? Just email us at support at dualscreens.com or uh, yeah, support, and we will get back to you and see if we could get on that service. But of course we're on youtube.com slash dual screens TV. And we stream a couple of days a week. Uh, some other podcasts that we do, uh, Indies nuts podcast and the dual screens crossplay podcast. And you can find those on twitch.tv slash dual screen streams. And of course on this very YouTube channel as well. And those are on podcast podcast services, um, as well. And if you want to support us on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash NDS podcast. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Colton, the apprentice Nestler and F and H Paul. We are just two days away from revamping and relaunching our Patreon. So keep your ears and eyes open for that, for those changes to come in. Uh, and now Andy, Oh boy hit us with our final question remy oh boy gird your loins because this is going to get tough i feel like we should in the future consider asking the question first then housekeeping so they can think about it if they have to maybe a little bit <laughs> um all right remy yeah it's a simple it's a simple question mm -hmm. it is a that's hard, really hard to answer it is a, no, yeah that's yep, it there it is <laughs> you nailed it. there it is you nailed it you nailed it Perfect. uh so i'm not going to beat around the bush man it's a simple okay. choice uh and the question is, Andy or Steven? <laughs> okay, so I get to choose which of you will hate me. Right, I see. I, I mean, sure. if that's how you think of it here's, in your yeah, mind. Here's the thing. We don't know what why you're choosing what you're yeah. choosing us for it could you be could say i want to kill you steven sacrifice to the gods right exactly who, who is going to be your reverse jesus like we don't know i want to <laughs> i want to donkey punch andy you know <laughs> like that's it, so or, it's yeah. never that's how it exists you know what i mean it's just it's just what it is it is what it is it's interpreted yeah. how you want to interpret it correct are we keeping score maybe possibly <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Do we hate? Do we hate ourselves? Absolutely. Have we done this <laughs> two hundred and sixty-eight times? Maybe. Yes, definitely. Yes. Do, do guests see, always hate I us? See. Uh uh. Most definitely. <laughs> well, if I had to pick one, <laughs> which I do apparently, uh huh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll choose Andreas. Okay. There it is. That's fair. I'm very sorry, Steve. No, no, no. It's no, no, no. Listen. I, I was gonna listen to the armed, but you know, f that now. They, they, just, they just lost a listener. He's not. He's not. You know, in the band. <laughs> no, I, I know. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentle germs, that's going to bring us to the end of the show. This was an absolute blast. If you want to follow us on social media, we're at dual underscore screens. I'm at Batchild27. Andy is at PantsGuy. Our Facebook group is facebook.com slash groups slash DS podcast. You could also find our like website facebook page at uh dual screens.com d-o-t-c-o-m on facebook um you can find us there too we're, we're trying to post more stuff on those pages we are very active on twitter and very active in our discord which you could join by being a patreon supporter um but we're gonna get a little bit more active or active at all on our other social media pages so hey. we do appreciate <laughs> that um all right well Remy, where could everybody find you, uh, sh yeah. the Shotgun King, and all that fun stuff? Oh, my and God. Uh, I'm not as good as you at this. But uh, all the Punk Cake games, you can find them from our website, punkcake.club. 
Uh, oh. So pancake is punk cake, like P U P U N K C L U B dot club. Um, and you'll find our Patreon, where if you give us three euros per month, you'll get a new game every month. And you'll find our h.io page, where all of the games are six dollars. And then there are, there's our Twitter accounts, where we're uh, very active as well. And there's our Discord, if you want to chat with us. We actually do chat with the players. Um, and I think that's kind of everything. My own Twitter handle is trasvol underscore dog, but that's like... I, I bet you have no idea how to spell that, and me neither, to be completely Trasavol. honest. <laughs> Trasavol dog. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm, I guess I'm less active now, but the, the Pancake Twitter account is very active now, so, yeah. Awesome. Um, All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have new merch on our merch store, too. We very rarely plug our merch store, so this show is officially going to be sponsored by dualscreens.com slash store. So go there yeah, right now. Yeah, sponsor. Right now. Yeah, the Dual Screen Show sponsors Help by us out. Dual That's Screen. Right. There you go. Buy a shirt, wear it on your, on your body, or, you know, a mug. You can get a mug or a sticker. You know, you don't have to get a shirt. But it's you can you can buy both the mug and the sticker and put the sticker on the mug. You can. It would ruin the sticker. Dr dress the mug in the almost shirt. instantly. Yeah, um, <laughs> we have tank tops too. So all right, Remy, I see you wearing the tank top. You could get a tank top. I'm just saying. Thank you, anyway, <laughs> listeners. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Remy. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, viewers. And as always, please be excellent to each other. <laughs>